agree. I will tell you that it is not the responsibility of this council to ensure that there's water available outside the city or hydrants available outside the city or apparatus to be able to do that outside the city. I haven't asked this question, but I would dare say that when you went ahead, you had no idea what was there and what you had to face. I saw the explosions. So what has to happen here in the last four incidents, major incidents, have been outside the city, including the, the plane crash. So it's about time that people started to understand that we need the manpower, we need the equipment, and we need the provincial government who has given permission for people to build outside the city to ensure that there's infrastructure there to protect those people that build outside the city and not be relying on us. And we're not buying more equipment and hiring more people to be doing something outside where you don't have the ability to even fight the fire department. So that's number one message that we want to get through to the province of New Brunswick. Secondly, I wanted to, I just wanted the public to get an opportunity to see what we've been dealing with as a council. And I know many of you were upset with me as mayor. And I'm sitting at home and I'm saying to myself, why? What did I do? Why am I under personal attack? What did I do? I didn't even know that these changes were coming till Thursday. And I learned it on social media. And I don't have a problem with that, because that's a great way to convey information. But you know what I have a problem with? Not being able to defend myself on social media. Not having, I'm having a problem with the lady that calls me, who's 80-some years old, and said, Brad, why are you supporting the north side? Why are, you, why are you just supporting the south side? Why are you removing equipment that's going to put me and my family at risk? How do I respond to that when I don't even know what the facts are? I want to say that I haven't been very impressed with the attack that you've made. Without us having the ability to have the information to respond, it's put us in a very awkward position. And I don't think that's fair. You know what? We're trying in this city to do a, a job with all departments, every department. We're trying to maximize the efficiency. Of course the city is growing. Of course you have a very important job to do. That's not the issue here. The issue is, don't go to Facebook. Don't go to Twitter. Let's talk. Nobody called me. Nobody called me on this issue. Nobody even asked me the question. Nobody called council. Nobody asked them the question. And then when I did get the question, it wasn't coming from our firefighters, it was coming from the public, asking me why I had done this. I didn't even know what I did. You know what? I want to work with our firefighters. I want to be able to do things a little differently than it's being done right now. This is not the way to do it. This is not the way to do it. Whether it's the fire department, or it's public works, it's transit, those decisions, ladies and gentlemen, are policy decisions, procedural decisions that are made by people that make a lot more money and have a lot more sense than the mayor and council. There's 170 years experience of people that have made the decision that's bringing this forward tonight that was only released on Thursday. That's why it doesn't come down to this level. We fund the big budget, but we don't get involved in all of those things. But I want the firefighters union, and I want the management to work together. I mean, this is a great city. We're all basically doing the same thing to provide a level of service to protect the public that we serve. Does anybody think for a moment that this mayor and this council would do something that is going to put people at risk? I don't think so. That's not why we're here. We're here to do the opposite. That's what we're here for. And it's about time if we have problems that we sit down, management, and firefighters. And this isn't something that's just come up. This has been going on for a long time. But every time there's a situation like that, who's the point man you drag into it? Who takes the brunt of it all? Me. Me. Like today, somebody said, uh, you know, uh, when I said that the decision should be made with the fire department, they said, well, there's the mayor passing the buck again. Well, guess what? I didn't even have a buck to pass. I had no clue 
I had no idea what was coming down until Thursday. So I'm not happy with a whole lot of people about what's happened here. I want to introduce the chief, and I want him to tell us what's going on, and I want him to assure the public that the decisions that were being made are being made with the public in mind, and it's not going to cause a situation where people are going to be at risk. And I think it's important to note that we're not pulling out any equipment anywhere. And that's important. And I'll tell you, I had one heck of a job trying to talk to people about that. They said, why are you taking equipment out of the North Side Station? Why are you doing that? The city's growing. Oh, of course, those comments all made sense to me until I found out. Chief, you're on. Uh, several months now, the threat of fire department has been investigating, investing in the implementation of a single model of response for fire station on both sides of the river. Administration report was submitted on June 12, 2013. In addition, the recent mining recommendations from KCB consultants were as follows. The fire department should strive to maintain four people on a plane, three people on a tanker, and two people on a rescue. Contrary to the recent reports, the tanker of two nations crossing is not being removed from service. Could you repeat that? It is not being removed from service. Thank you. It is important to note that these operational decisions did not come without many hours of discussion and consideration by myself, assistant deputy chiefs and in consultation with senior staff, between them bringing to the table 170 years of fire service experience. I want to go through some definitions for you. The fire company, a group of members, under the direction of an officer, trained and equipped to perform assigned tasks, usually organized in engine companies, ladder companies, or rescue no, companies, really. operating in one piece of fire apparatus, bump up twins, Elevated platform, tower, rescue, etc. <clears throat> Except where multiple operators are assigned to operate together, managed by a single company officer, arriving in these positions. Sorry about that. According to the fire engine equipment, the fire pump carries holes, ground ladders, water, and also has aerial flying wheels. Tanker is a fire engine that carries holes, fire pump, ground ladders, and extra large water tanks. Rescue operators in the first fire department are quick response vehicle for medical and rescue calls, but also provides for better response times for the first arriving personnel on the fire scene to begin size up and evacuation of residents in peril. The vehicle is well stocked with tools and equipment for a number of operations, including vehicle education, water rescue, ice rescue, as well as fire equipment such as forcible entry tools, air packs, swords, lighting generates them more. The rescue truck does not carry water or hoses. Kimble Road Fire Station houses an engine company, operates a tanker, and runs with a minimum of three people. The Old Street Fire Station houses a four-person minimum engine company on a point and a two-person rescue company. The rescue company runs first call and medical calls within the district and the Quint runs first call for most of the residents. Currently, the Oak Street Fire, the Oak Street Rescue Truck, is the only vehicle in the city that is fully outfitted for all firefighting, direct fire department rescue operations, and usually responds to rescue calls throughout the city. The Oak Street Station also has a backup fire engine, a boat, neither of which are staffed, and the